Uh, let me say welcome. My name's James. I work with Raisley as Raisley's lead educator. Uh, my goal at the core of it is to help those who uh, come on board with Raisley really feel confident within the uh, within the software to create incredible campaigns. So our sort of our motto is create, fundraise, and grow. My job is to help educate you so you can take that further. Now, as we sort of kick off all of our webinars, we just want to have, make sure we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which I host this webinar from, which is the Awabakal people, and pay our respects for all elders past, present, and future. Now, if you're new to Raisley, welcome. It's great to have you on board, particularly if this is maybe your first webinar that you've joined us with. Uh, it's great that we can do these webinars, and we really hope you get a lot out of them. Now, this one's a bit of a unique one. We're only doing 45 minutes. And one of the things I want to get really practical on this one, so we're going to sort of rush through a little bit. But like all of our webinars, we do actually put them up on our YouTube channel. So if you do want to, uh, if you can't make all of it, that is okay. You can do some catch up uh, on our YouTube channel. That'll be posted later on today. But it's great that you are with us with our webinars because it gives you opportunities to ask questions and do sort of fill out some of the polls as well that we have on there. And so we do want to encourage your questions. One of the best ways you can do questions is uh, you can use the Q&A feature within Zoom. And on that one, I'll be able to see those in the particular moments throughout our webinar this morning, in which I'll pause the questions and that uh, you guys can uh, put them through. You can even upvote them. If you sort of see one that you're like, I really agree with that, I'd love to see that answered. You can upvote them as well. Um, but we'll have some Q&A time in which I'll get to your questions, which is a bit of a unique thing that you have in being part of the webinar. So what are we actually doing today? Uh, we're diving into all things Giving Days, which is pretty exciting. Now, I'm not sure whether you're new or old to Giving Days, whether this is something that you've tried a lot or something that you are just looking and investigating in as whether it be a worthwhile campaign option for you. But at the core of it, a Giving Day is basically a very short time-based appeal campaign where you're trying to drive as much hype and as much buy-in from your donors and fundraisers uh, to help maybe a particular project launch or a particular area of uh, your fundraising needs uh, to get solved. Giving days are interesting. They're kind of, we feel so they originated in the US based around the holiday of Thanksgiving, sort of post that. Uh, and they are a huge thing in the US. So if you're in a US uh, uh, sort of audience, welcome. It's great to have you here. And you may be very used to giving days, but maybe other countries aren't so used to them. The great advantage of a giving day is they are time-based. And that is to do two things. One is to just generate a lot of excitement around a particular cause and communicate really, really well to drive as much buy-in as possible. And the time base also creates a little bit of FOMO in there that people kind of like, oh, I don't want to miss out on this. One of the core elements to any giving day is to making sure it's a big call for radical generosity that involves a community of people wanting to get involved. They're a really, really exciting campaign, which is why we're doing this webinar, and it's why at the core of it, we released three new Giving Day templates. Now, before I show you those and take you through a little bit, I just want to run a quick little poll just to see what your adoption is of Giving Days and how they kind of function around your campaign. So I'm going to release this poll just now, and you will see that poll up on your screen. If you could vote for that right now, that would be brilliant. Let us know what role do giving days play in your fundraising calendar? So I love this. There's so many of you who are like, never run one before, which is really, really exciting. No, we love that. Yeah, interesting that while many are sort of saying we run just one dedicated one each year. So it may sort of relate to a little bit like an appeal campaign that you sort of run regularly every year based on a certain um, on a certain end. Um, some sort of don't say that, that it's kind of a bit low that they're driven by a cause need or like a special project, which is an interesting one because actually that's a great use case. You may have a particular project that you are looking to launch and therefore you are hoping to provide some hype and some focus around that. And giving those can be a great sort of opportunity for that. But throw it out there, 60% of you never run one before which is so cool we're well, gonna you know, have a blast looking at why you would do this and how to set them up really, really easily as well all right i'm going to end the poll there thank you for your answers they were riveting um and i love that many of you that this is a bit of a new thing and so you're going to get uh heaps out of that i'll share the results so you can sort of see those as well 
So that's kind of what sort of popped up on the results. Forgive me, H-E-I. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. All right. So what are we actually going to be doing um, this morning? A couple of things. Number one, I'm going to showcase our new templates for giving days and take you a little bit through it and why we designed them the way we did and how you can maybe use them really easily. Um, within that, after that, I'm going to do a speed build, which is going to show you how I built a template and I'll, I've already made one. I'm just going to rebuild it again uh, and show you what I do to create a giving day template really quick, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, we'll do some Q&A time. Then I want to talk about uh, communication. What do you communicate? How do you set up a good message journey uh, in regards to giving days? Then we're going to look at landing pages, which is super exciting. It's one of my favorite features that just got released. Um, and I'll show you how to use those. We'll do some more Q&A and then we'll finish up. But first, why don't we dive in? Let me take you through some of our new templates and showcase these. So I'm going to share my screen and then we'll get stuck into it. So share screen uh google chrome yeah all right now you should be able to uh, see my screen just uh i'll call it to chantel there just give me a bit of a thumbs up if everyone can see my screen pretty well hope that should be all good fantastic lock it in all right, let me show you some cool new campaigns. So if I go to new campaign, we've updated here to choose a category. And now there's a new category called giving days and appeals. And here now you're going to see three different giving day templates. The cool part is that you can actually preview these. So if I hit preview, that's going to open it up. And you'll be taken through a sort of a bit of a mock-up on what one of the actual giving day templates look like. Now they all have the same structure, just different design. And the nice part about that, it gives you flexibility to use with your template. So let's go through it a little bit. We have a hero section with a core, uh, clean call to action for a donation. Uh, and at the core of it, that really is your major uh, call to action for any giving day, donate. You can then scroll down and you've got sort of your donation stream that's going to come on through. You've also got a little bit about the charity. Um, in which you can just easily fill in a, a, an image there and a little bit about what you're doing um, around that. Then we've got what we call, say, a community section, which is one of the core parts of any giving day. It's to help people see that they're not alone in doing this. You're really seeking to buy community buy-in. And so one of the ways you can do that is show how many donors, how much you've raised, how many fundraisers are involved in this. And also you've got a little leaderboard. Now we've got a cool little new one for uh, your leaderboards that you can use a grid for. So that's a new little feature. Then you've got your fundraisers because people can set up individual fundraising profiles. So instead of going to your page, homepage uh, for everyone, they can actually set up their own one, which has the same donation form and goes toward the same campaign. Then underneath you've got your match giving partners, which is a great opportunity. And we're gonna talk a little bit about match giving, but here with some sponsor logos and a bit of a shout out to those who are your match giving partners. And then at the end here, we now have a little final call to action, whether that's donate or create their own fundraising page. So they all kind of follow the same thing, but let me show you one little cool thing that we've added within giving days. And that's all around match giving. Now, what we have here is a regular donation form, but you've noticed this little box here that says donation matching hasn't started yet. Well, if you set up match giving in Raisley, this little thing is going to calculate for the person who's donating how much of their donation is actually going to be matched. So if I select this amount here, as you can see, the little box now changes and it calculates their gift to what the match giving will actually provide as the overall gift. So match giving hasn't started yet. That's true because there's not a thing. But here we can see that your gift will be $41. But now it's times three. And therefore, we receive $122.99. This is a great little feature to, to help people see the reality of match giving. And we're going to talk a little bit about match giving a little bit later. But this is a great one to help visualize some of that so you can really see how people can take their campaign further. Now, as I said, there's a few different templates you can actually have a look at. Uh, if we go preview here. We have sort of a um, what we call sort of our rainbow one. It's got a few other little features on design, which is kind of cool, such as the little uh, Polaroid images. And so it's a nice little section in the sense that you can sort of find a design that fits you and then apply your branding to that as well. I'll close that down. And then the last one 
is here is more sort of a standard bit of bolder uh, sort of one here. Uh, again, the colors we choose, but the nice part is I'll show you in a sec how to do all your branding for it. And you can sort of brand these however you want. But as you can see, they all sort of follow the same sort of pattern as we have a hero image with the donate. We have an about section to explain what the day is all about. You have your, your community section to see what's happening throughout the day. And then your match giving and then a final call to action as well. So they're the templates. Um, I'm a massive fan of them, uh, only because I'll show you in a sec uh, of why, because you can do a lot with them, um, but they're nice and simple. And what we say often when it comes to our templates is that they're completely mobile responsive, which to be honest, is kind of at times one of the trickier parts when you're sort of developing a website for your campaigns is making sure everything's going to appear really, really neatly on mobile. If you utilize the campaigns, the best part about them is they're going to work on mobile really seamlessly. So I encourage you, you should, uh, dive in, uh, use the templates, and you'll have a bit of fun with that. But let me show you one I built a little bit earlier. Now, I did, I was going to put up a bit of a uh, poll as to see what sort of theme you wanted for this. I might do that in the next webinar. But for this one, one of the things I was looking at uh, was uh, we've got a pug called Luna. We love her to bits. She appears in a few little videos that we do around. Um, and I thought I'd make the giving day all about her. It's very generic, but we'll have some fun. So what I've done here, as you can see, I've actually adopted Raisley's own brand from our website into a template. I haven't changed really anything in the template besides the brand settings and also some of the images. So this is our campaign um, uh, front end. Uh, our, our homepage. And as you can see, we've got a main call to action. I've also created a nice little banner here to uh, enable a countdown feature, which is going to be great. You can have that running throughout the day. And another little sign up button. If I go down, here's our um, beloved Luna. We love it a bit. Um, so <laughs> thank you, Luna, for uh, posing for that one for us. And you can say you a little bit about the charity here. Then we get a round of applause. Um, uh, as we can see here, this is what it's going to build out over your day for donors, total raise and fundraisers as well. Match giving partners, I've added a few little ones here uh, as an example of adding some logos. Uh, and then another little picture of Luna down the bottom. But let me show you something really, really cool. What we also have built into the template, if you actually have a look, um, is what we call a pre-launch page. And this is with the new release of landing pages ability to change your home page to, a, to a, a, a page that you want it to make. And so what I've actually done is created another page which would appear as the home page before the giving day actually starts. And this is great because you can do a whole lot of lead generation through these. So as you can see here, I've got Luna on the side. I've got a pug for a day, support for a lifetime. Nice tagline, James. Uh, and a little form that people can fill in to show their interest. And the best part about this is that you can set this up on a message journey so that when people sign up before your giving day, then you can take them through all sorts of things uh, within messages to get them hyped up, to get them ready, get them resourced uh, for the actual giving day. So as you say here, uh, again, a bit of a shout out to our match givers so you can show that there's already excitement around the campaign before it's even started because you've got match givers there and one of the really cool things you can do with this which was from our previous webinar where one of our, uh, our panelists said that the major thing for any giving day success if you want a call to action is getting people before the campaign adding it to their calendar so here i've added a few little buttons to add to google cal add to outlook or add to office 365 and i'll show you how to create these links in a little bit too but these are great because you can go save the date, make sure, and it puts it as a calendar reminder for them so they're never going to forget when the actual day is on and it's going to remind them to donate on that day if they haven't already signed up. So that's a pre-campaign, but let me show you the last little one. And the last one is a post-campaign landing page. So here, yeah, cool, nice little GIF. Um, but here what we can do is set up a page even before the campaign started that's going to actually pull in all the information we need to show people what was the impact of that day literally the, the day after so we can just set this up as a new home page uh, and as a post campaign page and you can make it nice and simple and you can basically design this however you want uh, which is kind of nice bit of a shout out to that and one of the things i like is that you can also do a post campaign call to action and one of the most common ones would be a call for regular givers 
you can actually even make this section here in this row only show for those who donated over a certain amount um, within your campaign as well. So you can do some really, really clever things, but a great call to action post campaign can be, hey, why don't you consider signing up to be a regular giver around that? So they're the three pages that I have created. Uh, we got your main page, we've got a pre-launch page, and we've got a post-campaign um, impact page is what I'd call it as well. So that's kind of where we want to take it today. And uh, we'll dive in. But what I'm going to do is just quickly uh, throw it out there. If you have any questions so far about what I've just shown before I go into the speed build, you can use the Q&A feature right now and I'll answer any questions that pop up. I'll give you about 10 seconds to see if any uh, questions do up here. So feel free to comment. No questions is yet. That's fine. Anyone got any questions? Happy observing. All right. Well, we might get into it. I'm going to do a bit of a speed build. <laughs> Let's see how quick I can do this. Uh, when are your best days to run these in the year? Really great question. Uh, thank you, Ruth. One of the interesting things with giving days is. Uh, I think a, a larger time them around a celebratory moment within your year. Now, most likely you've already got a lot of appeals maybe set up for say Christmas or other holidays, but looking at the concept of putting this in a time in which there's already some excitement around that space can really, really help sort of drive a little bit more. Um, the other side is they can also be used in maybe one of your slump periods. So there may be a bit of a gap in between campaigns you have in your year and you're trying to work out what do we do on that? Again, giving days are really fun. So you can put a lot of excitement internally in your stuff to really push hard on maybe one of your quiet moments of the year. So I'd go on those ones, all right? But try not to sort of overlap them with other major campaigns you have. And does the module, uh, Aaron asks, does the module exist with the ability to remove the sign up feature? Yeah, absolutely. You can adjust anything in Razor. You can remove the sign up. You don't have to give people access uh, to the sign up page. Um, that's literally as simple as either changing the header um, or you can, uh, uh, because they're, um, yeah, you just ch change up the header. I can show you how to do that at the moment. Or you just make sure there's no buttons that go to the sign up. So you're basically running it like an appeal campaign um, in there, but you just remove all the sort of links that would take someone naturally to a sign up. Um, so that's relatively easy. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Aaron. Great questions and keep them coming in the next session. All right. Everyone ready? <laughs> Let's do a bit of a speed build and hopefully you learn a little few little tips uh, on how to create campaigns around this. So what we're going to do, I'm going to first uh, choose a template. I'm going to go this one. Uh, I'm learning, uh, giving a day. Oh. And we'll give this one super. Oh, it's already done. As we said, speed build, my typing may let me down. Okay. Super duper, let's create a campaign. Now, what happens when you do create a new campaign is the first model that pops up is your design settings. Now, let me encourage you, this can be really, really helpful. So if I select here, what I already have uh, is a bunch of assets. Actually, no, I'll leave the logo for the moment, but I do actually know my brand colors. So what I do actually have, I've got a Notion page um, in which I put my brand colors into Wonderful. I'm going to copy the hex values for my other brand. And this is just a great little shortcut to just to do. If you already know what your brand colors are, generally speaking, you can add these in right now, which is really helpful. But one of the ones I really recommend is adding in your font. Now, in most cases, you're going to be using the same font um, that is uh, according to your brand. If not, that's okay. Um, but if you do have a brand, you most likely will have two or three fonts that are commonly used within that. You can find those in your website and you can enter them here. So our one is we use a one called Antique Olive and it's really, really common um, within all of our Razy stuff and we use it with Adobe. So we have an Adobe integration for it as well. So I'm going to hit next. That's fine. It doesn't matter if it says it's not recognized because it will be. Okay, and I'm going to skip that and I'm into my campaign. Now, just quickly, I'm going to go back to one of my campaigns 
because I couldn't remember what our Adobe uh, fonts, that's the one I'm after. Sorry, forgive me. Okay, let's go back in. So what I do want to do with my brand settings, I just want to activate Adobe fonts um, uh, because that's what we have our font in. If you're using uh, Google fonts, that's great. They're already all available or maybe you're even doing a custom font which you can find a support document for that as well. But we have Adobe fonts, that's going to help that get set up. So what I want to do now is just go into my brand settings and I'm going to go brand, I'm going to go logo and I'm going to already pick our logo here. Let's go that one. Now my brand color is already done. I'm going to hit my save my changes and now I've got my Raisley logo and I've got my brand colors done. Next thing I want to do is just go into fonts. And as you can see, all my heading fonts are now going to be defaulted as Antique Olive. And you can see the preview there, which is kind of great. But I don't use Antique Olive for everything. I also use another one called Basic Sans. Um, now that's used for heading five. Save my changes. And it's also used for the paragraph text. All right, now I'm gonna show you a major shortcut that I do. Most likely you have your same brand settings for almost all your campaigns. You may vary a little bit with colors and th things like that, but particularly when it comes to fonts, in most cases, you're probably gonna be using a very, very similar font toward your uh, organization's web page. So uh, there are a couple of ways to do this. One way you do it is that you just go in and adjust all your settings for your fonts every time. That's completely fine, completely normal, and a good practice to do. A quick cheat though, is I use our CSS style sheet. I scroll down to the very, very bottom and I've actually got all of our styles uh, co uh, copied into another document in Notion that I just come in here and I paste it in and go save. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna apply all of my font settings across everything really quick. And I'm done, I, like all my fonts are done. I don't have to do anything else they are all ready to go. As you can see, they're already changed all through there. What I also did in there is I changed the buttons uh, in, in the CSS, but there you go, that is our brand, we're done. Uh, it was as simple as that. I now have a site. If I go into live site, you're gonna see, so quick, right? My brand settings are already there. It's already starting to look like Raisley's giving day, which is kind of cool. So let's get out of that. Uh, now, next one I want to do is just quickly, as always, you add a uh, payment of a provider. That's really, really quick. So I'm going to add an existing account. That's going to just take that little awkward message off when you're looking at your, uh, at, at your live site as well. And now what I want to do, let's dive in into our pages and we're going to go to our homepage. But let me quickly just show you on this end. As you said, I said earlier, we've got a new page that's been added. And this here is called pre-launch homepage. Now, what we released recently was a cool little feature that with these little three dots, you can click and you can select this, uh, this little drop down called Make Homepage. And what this will do, it'll make that page your root page. So if you went to raisy.com, that page would be the one that links to raisy.com. And you can change these. So when you're running a pre launch homepage, you don't want your homepage to be seen or found because you might be still working on it, but you want to release out your pre your pre campaign page you can now do that with safety knowing that that's going to be the home page you can now work on your other home page until that's ready and then launch it when you need to particularly on the giving day you can launch it on the exact time you want so hopefully that, that makes sense but uh well you can ask some questions a bit later on uh about that as well now i'm going to go into our home page here and as you can see i've got a bunch of things sort of happening here what i want to quickly do it takes five seconds is i'm going to um, just change a couple of images. So don't want this image. Let's go here. Remove this one. And where's our Luna girl? There she is. Wonderful. Already taking shape. We'll change the last picture. Now, what I've done here is I've put actually my images in my organization media library, which you can access via the sidebar on organization and then media library. And it gives you a little quick reference as well. My big encouragement is to make sure you have a folder before you even start building your campaigns that have um, a folder with a whole bunch of images that in, in which you use. 
One of my encouragements would be uh, use a site like Pexels. One of the biggest things we see with many websites is people are using poor quality images. Um, now, so many images are free these days, and it's crazy that you don't just jump on some of those sort of sites. So if you go say Pexels is one of my favorite, you can just type in Pugs, and you can find just a whole lot. So we've even got Luna on that one. Um, there's all sorts of ones that you can pick out for this. You can spend days on this, I know, right? But pick an image, go over. But they're all high quality images that I really recommend you use. It's going to give you a lot of help to create your images. Now, we've done that. The next one we want to do is put our Max Giving sponsor logos in. So if I go here, I can then add some sponsor logos in. Now, a quick word with sponsor logos, uh, always make sure they are transparent PNG files. Um, make sure if they can is to not have a background. Um, if they do, you may just run into color issues and they kind of look a little bit clunky. The nice part is we resize them all uh, sort of for you within this grid structure. You can even add more or you can add less, um, but we can sort of shrink this down as well. They don't need to be so big. And these are little great ones. You can put a URL for them so they can link out to those uh, uh, match giving sponsors website. Uh, which is helpful. And you can also put an alt text, which is just going to show if the image doesn't appear on some browsers or phones or, or things like that. But a really helpful one. Uh, I encourage you to use this. Nice one. But the big rule with any sort of form of icons is make sure they are transparent PNGs with no background. Um, and there's uh, a whole bunch of tools you can use to do that Photoshop and other online ones as well. Photo P is another one uh, that we recommend, which is a free open source one too. Now, a quick word about match givers. One of the things with a giving day, which is really, really helpful, is an encouragement to look at um, match giving before you start your campaign. Match givers may be sort of maybe your corporate sponsors. Uh, they may be sort of some of your, ma your major donors. And what they want to do is they want to has to have more excitement around their day and they might allocate a pledge amount. And that pledge amount, you may maybe a pledge, you may actually receive it before the campaign. But it'll be, say, an amount of $10,000 or $20,000. And they say, great, for every dollar that's raised, we will match it up to the amount of $20,000. Now, getting a few of these is going to really help your community see a greater buy-in for this, which is really important, which is why I've also put this section on the uh, original uh, pre-campaign page as well. Finding some match donors uh, for any sort of form of giving day is really going to help bolster the day itself. Uh, so I encourage you, find some match givers, set up a nice little proposal for them. You can even create an, another page for them to go to uh, in Raisley, which might be good. That you can put all your information in there as well. Um, you can even put a donation form in there that they can donate to and choose their amount. So there's a whole bunch of things you can do there with match givers. Uh, which we'd encourage as well. But I'll put some stuff out about match giving uh, on our YouTube channel very, very shortly. All right, so that's uh, kind of our um, sponsors done. And now I want to show you a really, really important little tip. One of the things I love about our templates is that you can use them for any pages that you go on through. And a great way to do this is to save them. So every single row, I can actually save as a template. So I'm going to call this a hero row. And that's saved. Great. I'm going to call this one here and about row. Uh, I like this little one. It's a sort of a nice little heading. So I'm going to save that subheading row. And I'm going to save our match givers because that might be one that I'm going to repeat through as well. Match giver row. Uh, if I want to, I can also do a uh, say call to action row. Now, what this means is, is that I've now saved those rows as particular templates and I can reuse them for all my pages within my campaign. So if I wanted to add, say, another match giving uh, row to this, I could just go into add rows, templates, and they're all here for me to quickly use. So if I go on another match giving row, I want to add it here. How? As simple as that, right? It's going to speed up your web design so, so much. 
But probably the more important thing is actually going to do for your site is provide a whole bunch of consistency. It's going to provide consistency on your mobile responsiveness. It's going to provide consistency in how people navigate all the different pages as well. So I really recommend that you actually use the save, uh, save template row. It's going to save you a ton of time. Um, and I've now got those set up. I'm relatively happy with my home page. I think that'll do for the moment. Um, but we can always go in and change other things such as copy and stuff. But this is speed round, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Don't forget to save, James. Otherwise, all your things are undone. And I want to go back here. Okay, so what we're going to look at now is um, the sign-up page. Uh, and this is a helpful one just to make sure you go in and uh, uh, change some of the headings as well. So at the moment, you've got create a page, which is a little bit boring. So you might want to change that to uh, join the action or whatever. Question mark. Um, but you can change your headings there. You can change the little headings in your sign up form as well, which I'd encourage you to do. But make this something that you're really, really going to love. But also, if you wanted to, you can, again, add some of the rows that you were using before. So say, I'm going to go subheading row. And I can add here and put some new information in there, but it's all going to be the same look and feel as previous pages as well, which is really, really important. So big encouragement to go in there and change your sign-up copy. So I'm going to go back. Now, the next one I want to have a look at is my fundraising profile. Now, fundraising profiles are terrific. Within a giving day, what you have is an ability. You don't have to use this, as we said before, but you have an ability for, to actually encourage people to create their own page. Why would you do this? The main reason you do it is to help people um, when when it comes to giving, people are, are, are a little bit funny, right? So you'll know this. At times, they want to be very connected to your cause. And so therefore, your homepage and your cause and your organization may be the main trust piece that they're going to be giving to and that. But at times, it's not. The trust piece that they're going to be giving to may be their friend who knows about the cause. So the very core of it, they're giving because their friend thinks it's valuable, not because you think it's valuable. That's why a fundraising profile can be super helpful um, because you can just uh, change that little trust piece that you have in between that to being, it's, I'm actually going to drive donors to another person who in turn will, do, uh, uh, will drive it toward us. Another op option for fundraising profiles as well is at times you have like workplace giving. You might have sort of... Uh, Put, sort of put a message pitch out to say, hey, would your workplace get involved in this? We'll create your own page for you. Or you can create your own page for yourself. Uh, and so now you have a workplace page in which everyone in that workplace and company can now give to. Now, it doesn't mean workplace, it could be your, your community group or whatever it is. But you can create a page in which people sort of get sort of excited around that page and do some sort of fun things with. Now, as, as always, uh, like any sort of normal fundraising page, they have a whole bunch of things that sort of come into it. Um, their profile name, their image. Uh, when they sign up, you can add new custom fields in which you can import into your page as well. Um, so all that's relatively simple that uh, to happen there. But one of my encouragements is this. Um, here at the moment within your profile page, you know, if someone creates a profile before the campaign starts, what's going to happen is, uh, is that they're going to see the donation form before you want them to see the donation form. All right? So... <laughs> You kind of maybe want to hide that, but even better, maybe replace it with something. So what I'm going to do, if you have a look at our developer docs, uh, don't worry too much. I've got a class helpers, and I'm going to copy a class helper, which is uh, hide, no, hide when logged out. That's the one I want, hide when logged out. And as you can see, I can't edit here the donation form. Let me quickly show you the reason why. If I go into my row settings, go to columns, and you can find here, oh, not that one, the other column. I think it's two or three, it might be three, that one there. No, it's not that one there. There we go. I'll just change the top margin. Uh, up a little bit. Now that's available for me to edit. So I can simply select, oh, cancel. So all I've done is just change the margin on that column to bring that little section down so I can edit it. 
Otherwise, it's just not accessible in the page editor. So now I have that option. Uh, and I can go to advanced attributes. And I can put a custom class in here. Doing hide. Hide when logged out. So what that means is that is hide logged out means that the donation form won't actually appear if someone just goes to the profile page. It will appear when someone uh, who who's owns the profile page goes in and logs in, right? But what you want it to do is just to be hidden so that people in the workplace don't see that they're before the day. When the day uh, giving day starts, you can simply just remove that and you're done, which is kind of cool. Now, what would you replace it with? Now, you can do this with the match giving thing as well. What I'll typically replace it with is I'm going to put a heading in there, and I'm also going to put a countdown timer in there as well. So oh, let me just fix those row settings up. Column three. Wonderful. And this could be countdown as begun. Now, I don't want it that big, so I'm going to go there. And the cool part is I can change the background color. I can change the text color. And I can also here change the padding. So I'm going to go 60. All right. And I've also got my little countdown timer that's there as well. And I can save that. And now that section here is going to appear instead of the actual profile um, donation page. Um, so donation form is going to appear. So the nice part here, you can have another little block that's going to appear, and you can just remove this when your campaign starts. All right, really, really easy. Um, so that's just a great little idea. You put a countdown timer in there as well. Now, what else we got to do on this? So a countdown timer, you can hide values. That's fine. Um, you've got, uh, oh, that's the thing I did totally want to show you. I had it had it to really, really quickly, is how to add calendar links. So I'm going to jump out of the fundraising profile page. You can do a lot in there. I'll put a video up to explain a little bit more around that. But there's the fundraising profile page. There's some, some of the things to think through. But say our um, pre-launch campaign, what I want to do is uh, in here is look at the idea of putting in, actually, no, sorry, I'll backtrack. What I want to quickly do is just put in another little row in here for a countdown timer. And the reason I'm going to do that for the home page Oh, close that. Uh, let's change the background color. Play that one. Now, what I want to do here is create like a little section up the top where I can put a countdown timer. And I can put some text in there as well. And I think that what that's going to do is that people go to the home page, you can clearly see how long the day is going to go. Really encourage you to put in your templates up on the banner, make it nice and high. One of the things you can do if you want to shrink the vertical space, drop that down a little bit, and so it's a little bit more squishy. But that's going to now appear at the top of all of your pages, such as this. So you want to design something like this. It's just going to appear at the top there. It's going to count down. You can set your countdown timer uh, settings all through settings as well to display on the day. All right, really, really cool little option. So that's kind of what we want to get out of that. Now, uh, I've rushed through. That's a bit of a speed build. There's so much more I want to, I want to look at, and I'm really, really keen to get to our pre our landing pages before we sort of finish that. But I'm going to leave it there. As I said, there's a lot you can do. We've covered brand settings. We've covered how to add some um, uh, countdown timers. And we've looked at some of the pages that you may want to go in and edit for a giving day. As I said, I'm going to put a whole bunch of videos up on each of these. But that gives you a bit of a feel and regarding what you can do. And one of the major ones is utilize those templates. Save the templates that are already in there. Save the road templates that are already in there and reuse them throughout your site as well. Now, there's some campaign setup things that you want to be doing as well, but I'm going to pause it there because I've been talking for a lot. We've been going through a lot, and I reckon you probably have a few questions. So I'm going to open up for questions now. If you want to use the Q&A feature, we've got heaps here at the moment, and I'm just going to scroll through some of the ones that are around here. Do you have a, team, uh, do you have a Teams option for the page? 
Yes, our answer is, the Patricia, no, we don't have a Teams option for the page. We actually decided not to sort of incorporate that into it, um, largely because the giving days are, tr are, are almost half breed between a peer-to-peer -peer and an appeal campaign. A peer-to-peer -peer campaign is going to always have a bit more complexity around it. Because a giving day is supposed to be simple and short-term, complicating the sign-up process for people may just be a little bit too much to add for a giving campaign. So I've kind of left it out of it. Um, so the encouragement would be if you have a collective that do want to set up their own page, then therefore what you'd have is you just create one page that would represent the collective and that's what they can go to. So it's a little bit of a half breed between the peer to peer and that's because they're not supposed to be complex. They're supposed to be a little bit simpler with sort of a, a clearer call to action rather than to just get uh, sort of diving too much into it as well. Now, got a few other ones. Uh, Joe says, with the template rows, if you change it on the main landing page, does the pre and post pages also update accordingly? Uh, I had a match uh, for sponsor on the main. Does it then change in the template? Uh, Joe, the answer is no, it doesn't. All right. Um, you will have to change that, which is why that when you create your templates for it, is make sure you get one page perfect and then work on your other pages. Uh, it's a really, it's actually a good practice in general to do because what it means is you're going to have consistency through that. Now, so my encouragement is work on the homepage, design your design your rows of what you want, or you can even create a completely blank page and create different rows of what you want to use, and then make sure that they are the ones that you're using consistently throughout the site as well. So no, they don't update automatically. Chantel has been an absolute weapon, answering a whole bunch. Uh, in this webinar is all about how to edit the template for match giving, not any information on actually running giving days. Great. Let me show you a little bit about running giving days uh, because we're going to get to communication set up and also landing pages as well. So let me talk a little bit about giving days. If you are interested in giving days, though, we have two webinars available on our YouTube channel, which is all about strategy and about what to do on your giving days. Um, so I really want to push those. I'll make sure they're in the link to this video as well that you receive a little bit later on as well. Um, there's some great panelists on all of those ones that you really, really enjoy. Uh, can you save a row and copy it to a different campaign? No, you can't. They're all based around a specific campaign. That's because uh, each individual website acts as its own database. So you can't actually copy them up through different campaigns. Uh, and encouragement is just maybe use similar templates and uh, just make a record of sort of some templates that you've saved on different campaigns. A great opportunity is uh, what you can do is you can duplicate campaigns out. So often what people can do is actually create a templated giving day campaign that then when they have a giving day, they then just copy that template out and they just reuse that every time. So that's a kind of another shortcut you can do if you're looking to save a little bit of time as well. Uh, can we find match? How do we find match givers? All right, why don't I get stuck into that for a little bit about match giving because it probably will help you in regards to setting these up. So let's just tick this. Save. Now, match giving is important. We've talked a little bit about it, but if I go into my settings, what I've got here is an option called match giving. And within match giving, I can now create a match giving period. I can call this, say, company one. Uh, I can put an amount, say, 20,000. I can put it in my time. I can also put it in a name of the person and the message they want to get. So I might have the name is company one. And we are proud to give. Here's a great little tip for using match giving around this. This is an offering that you can supply your match givers. It's basically advertising for them. So you can say to them, hey, if you come on board as a match giver, one of the things that we can do is that every single donation that is matched by you we're going to reaffirm that in a message that you can curate. So you can say to them, hey, send us the message that you would like to receive, for others to receive when, that, that, when, when they see one of your ones matched as well. Now, one of the cool things is you have an option here called match conditions. There's a few around here, donation amount. So you can apply this match only when a donation amount is over a specific thing. So I've got equal to or greater than or less than. So that gives you a bunch of flexibility. Another thing you can do here is profile type. So if I select this and go individual, it means that on the profile pages, it's going to apply 
for um, all those who have set up their own individual profile. Well, the cool part about that is that you can apply match giving to, partic um, to uh, some match giving uh, companies only to people who have actually signed up uh, and created their own fundraising page. That can be really, really helpful. Say, for example, if you've got a, um, as I'll show you one of the other options, is the donation profile is, and you can type in the actual profile it is. Say, for example, so one of the things about this one is that it's really helpful, say, for example, if you've got a company that set up a, up a page for themselves and the company says, do you know what? The executives go, wait, we'll match all the donations that come on through on this. So you can actually allocate their, that, that company as a match giver, put in their giving period, put in the condition of only match this type, this giving to that particular profile. So that might be company one also has a profile page and you can link it directly to that. It's a great offering that you can be putting out through messages as well to really spike up your match givers saying to company execs, hey, would you match your company as your employees donate and we can set that up for you all through conditions. One of the great parts here, once I've saved a period, I'm gonna confirm, is that we've actually recently updated this where you can actually have uh, concurrent match givers. So you can now put in as many as you want um, all around the same timeframes, um, which is really, really helpful. So that's a really good little feature. And the other one with match giving is that you can always pause it during the time. So some really good flexibility in regards to match giving. And once you've set that up, it just automatically runs. Now, one note is you can't backdate match giving. So make sure you set them up pre-campaign and away you go to sort of uh, sort the rest out in the future um, as well. So hopefully that will be helpful. Uh, there's a great little section on match giving. Now, what I do want to show you uh, is quickly is diving into pages. I know I'm over time, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll keep going with this. Um, now, what I want to look at is how to actually set up a pre-launch campaign because I want to show you how to put a calendar invite in because it's really important. So if I go into my pre-launch homepage, which is already default, I've got all of this here. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bin all that. Um, do you know what? For brevity's sake, I'm going to show you one of my previous campaign because it'll make it a little bit easier for you. Here we go. Pages. All right. So this is my pre-campaign page. Uh, no, that's my post-campaign page. Pre-launch homepage. Here we go. Okay, so we've got here a simple lead form, which is going to really help with sure. And you can see that the theming is still the same that I've used, a section that I've used in my previous homepage. I've got a shout out to my match givers, and I've also got a little button I've created to might go to another page if they're interested in being a match giver. So you can do a little lead gen, gen for match givers as well. But here's a cool little feature, save the date. This is a major one by Christine, who was on a panelist for one of our Giving Day webinars, which I'll send you the link. And she was saying that one of the core elements to us Giving Day success is making sure people add it to their calendar before the day comes. That's going to give them a reminder uh, that on the day they are there to donate to it. Such a simple and very, very cool idea. And it's really, really easy to do. So all I've done here, as you can see, I've got save the date, a few little bit of bits of copy. And I've got a little block, which is just a button block. And I've got three buttons, first button and second button and third button. But what I've done, I've used a cool little program and you can Google these and find them out here. But if you go to labnol.org slash calendar, I'll put the link in the description below when this is uh, uh, launched out. One of the cool things is that I can actually put in my event title, say new webinar. I can put in an event location, an event description, time zone, put the uh, start date, end date, all the details you would for any sort of calendar event. And here it's going to give me the direct links I'm going to need. I've got Google Calendar, I've got Microsoft Outlook, and I've got Office 365. The cool part about each of these links is simply that as soon as I click them down here and go add, add that, oops, it goes to my sign up page. I've actually put the link in. Uh, it, what it's going to, what it's actually going to do is going to um, open directly their Google Calendar, or it's going to open directly their Outlook Calendar, and it's going to say, "Hey, just save this into your diary." It is a great shortcut. It means they don't have to download anything. It doesn't mean they've got to put it in manually themselves. It takes all the effort out of it. So all I need to do is literally copy this link here for my Google. I just copy the link. 
go to add to Google Calendar. I've got this button here, and I'm going to put that in my sign up and save. Now, if I go back, refresh my page, it's going to open my Google Calendar. It's going to give me the event name. It's going to give me the time and everything. It's going to give me everything I need in there. And all I have to hit is save. Now, as a donor experience, that is unreal. So I really, really encourage you to use this concept here. It's a great, I'll show you the site again. It's labnoel.org and calendar. I'll put the link in the description uh, of the vid. But a really, really great little shortcut you have to setting up uh, just those uh, saving the event calendar, calendar moments. But as you sort of said, this is a very, very simple pre-campaign page. You've got a lead gen form. You've got some hype around what's going to happen with match givers, and you've got to save the date. Now, you can get as creative as you want around this. One of my big encouragements could be that you could, if you wanted to, your primary call to action could be sign up, create your own fundraising page. You can redo really anything you want um, in regards to that as well. Now, I've got one last thing to do. I'm going to open up for some questions before I show you a little bit around communication setup. So can you add a video to a pre-launch page? Absolutely, Patricia. You can add a video in super easy. If you say you got it here, let's have a look at old Luna. Here we've got background image. I've got the option here uh, for tablet. I can add in the video option here. So I can paste in a YouTube link or a Vimeo link and the video is going to appear there uh, instead. So really, really helpful. You can put in little videos um, that, that are going to help you with your pre-launch page. A great idea that if you can produce something sort of that looks good uh, and introduce people clearly to your campaign and how to interact with it, really great idea. Uh, so that the sign-up form could be a sign-up and create profile so that uh, sign up form could sorry Joe I'm just going to read your question create a profile form pre-event yeah totally right if you want this to be a sign up form all I've done here is put a lead form in there if you want it to be a sign up form simply use sign up form oh. and you can put your sign up form in there one of the cool parts is that you can link that to ticketing so if you wanted that to actually relate to tickets as well because you might have some merch that you want to uh, give them for the day. You can totally do that as well. So you can put a sign up form in there really, really simply. It's really what call to action that you want to have a look at as well. Uh, Mel Key said, will match giving be available in other campaigns or just giving days? No, it's available in all your campaigns. So you can use match giving wherever you want. Um, uh, it's a really encouragement for many of your appeal campaigns as well. But match giving is available. I'll be putting out a YouTube clip all about match giving very, very soon because we kind of lack a little bit of support. There's a great support document around match giving, but I want to put some video content up on that as well to explain a little bit more how match giving can work for you. So great question, Mel. Do you, uh, how do you create the post launch page? Yeah, Abby, thank you for asking. I was kind of proud of this. I like the little post campaign page. I think it kind of works well. As you can see, there's a cute little GIF one here. A couple of other things I've done with the post campaign page. Now, I know I'm going over time. So if you do uh, are with us, please keep coming. Uh, stay with us a little bit longer. Um, but I will put this out on YouTube as well so you can catch up if you need to go. Um, how do you create a post uh, 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 page? Let me just go back, get out of that one. All I've done is I'm just going to add a page. I can just call it a post campaign page. Uh, I often use clone from, uh, it just helps shortcut a few things. So I'm going to clone this from the pre-launch page and go create. That's just going to create a new page for me. Come on. Refresh this. Okay, so we've got post, post campaign is going to be in draft. And here I am here. Now, that's going to uh, be the same as it was I've cloned it from the other page. But let me take you to the one I've actually used before uh, that I did for this one. So post campaign homepage. Now, a couple of little things I did with you um, is I want to keep it really simple as an impact page. Some of the really cool little features you can use for your rows are 
If I go to advanced and height, I can set this to 100%, which means that I'm going to see this whole page when I open this up. This is great for mobile because people are only going to see this page first before they start scrolling. So the concept is of an impact page is that it can just scroll on through. So using vertical height, 100% can be a great little shortcut to using that. This is just a GIF that I've downloaded and put into an image. Again, this is just a very simple two column row that we set up with the things uh, with an image on one side and some data on another side. And you can add merge fields in here to help sort of display all the impact that you want. If you use merge fields, the advantage is that you don't actually have to update the page um, later on. All the data will automatically roll on through, which is kind of fun. Uh, here is one of my big encouragements to you as well. It's great to have a story um, within your impact page that's tangible, but don't put a thousand stories. I see a lot of people put heaps of stories on their pages. One of the things, just put one, which is really, really cool, and point people to your social media. Right? Most likely, you've already put a lot of the stories up on social anyway or creating new pages for it. Point them there, and they can have an experience of looking at your social. And the best part about that, they can get more out of your social as well and they can start following you. Um, then you've got um, your big, big thanks and shout out to all the matches. And then you can also create just another donation page under here. So Abby, I hope that was helpful. Uh, gives you a bit of a uh, bit of fun. Now, a uh, quick question came in. Would a better idea for a calendar reminder be to customize an event overview or would it not work as great? Customize an event overview. Uh, not exactly sure what you mean by event overview. Um, there's a bunch of ways you can skin the cat in regards to uh, giving them a calendar reminder. The nice part is with the way we're just showing you is it's just going to appear in their thing and you can put a reminder on it. So it's going to suit their thing. You're not asking them to suit your thing, which is kind of at times helpful uh, as well. So that's for the uh, post campaign. Page. Maybe I hope that was helpful as a quick little run through through a post campaign. Now, what I want to quickly just mention very, very, uh, uh, very lastly is what to do on communication. Now, one of the best parts with Razor is that you can set up message journeys, which is very, very simple by creating a new message and add that message to a journey. What you have here is all your normal messages that go through, and you will need to do a whole bunch of work just to make sure they're all customized and looking really, really good for your giving day. But let me give you some ideas that you can take away to look at for creating a great journey within, um, within your giving days. The first would be always have an invite email, which is plug in the day, cause driven, community minded. At the core of it, it has a clean uh, uh, call to action um, that, they, uh, that, 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 that they should register. So really the call to action there is go to our free campaign launch page. Um, go there, go to the homepage before the thing, it's all about the invite email that you're going to be putting out to your database. That's kind of the mass email that goes out to get people um, just seeing what this giving day is about. And the call to action there is just get their information, get their site, get their buy in. So then you can take them on the next step. The next one is if they do fill out um, the pre launch page, so if they do fill out this little form here, the next message I would have is a really an interest email. So what we what you want to look at is how is it really community champions focused? How does it really celebrate them as being someone who's opted in for this and take them on that journey? Now your call to actions could be we're going to here's how to set up your own profile page, or it could be directed toward match giving. Now one of the ideas I had for this is a little bit of a crazy idea uh, for it. But one of the things they on this campaign for a pug for a day support for a lifetime is what you could even do is that you can associate a, say for this case, you could actually associate an individual pug um, and say, do you know what, over the day, that's going to be your pug that you're going to support. And you might have five different pugs. You might have Bruce or Bruno and Luna and, and Princess or whatever five different pubs with five different images. And so what you're saying to me was that when you do actually sign up, we're going to give you a pug to look after for the day. Now it's a bit of a virtual pug, right? They're going to get the images that are going to be the same, but it's a great little tag to sort of bring people in and create some interest around it. You're giving them some choice early on. Now, one of the things I'll also do on number three for our messages is always do an excitement email. One of the major things 
to doing for your pre-campaign workup is making sure you keep the hype rolling. Now you can do a few of these, you don't just need to do one, but making sure you have a custom message that is generating excitement around the day. That's generating excitement for those who have signed up, generating excitement for match givers, generating excitement for your general donor base as well. Another message I'll have is impact tracking halfway point. Make sure that on the day, there's an automated message that's gonna happen halfway during the day to give people an update about how you're tracking for the day. It's going to uh, have the campaign total. It's going to have an option of how to donate to it. It's all about donations. So at the core there is really pushing through a impact tracking halfway point on the giving day where you're going to have a message that goes out, updates people on the impact and gives them a clear call to action about how to donate more. And last one, do a closeout email. The closeout email is a great opportunity to capitalize on anything post-campaign. The closeout email would include an email that goes out literally the next day. It will link to your post campaign page. And from that, you can have a call to action such as be a regular donor or uh, um, uh, join the course or register your interest for the next giving day we have. You can do a lot with a closeout e email as well. So the journey I would have is a mass invite email, an interest email that is generated from the interest that they express from the pre campaign sign up. Make sure you have excitement emails. Look at impact tracking halfway point on the day, a great email that gets sent off that, and then it close that email. One of my great little resources here is reallygoodemails.com. Gives you a ton of inspo on some just beautiful uh, email designs that are taken from all sorts of companies that you can look at, go through. You can even copy code from them. You can do so much around thinking through what you want your emails to look like and say and communicate as well. All right, I feel like I have run way over time, but I hope you really, really found that crazy helpful. And there were some really good insights that you got from that. But what's next? Well, what's next? The first thing we encourage you to do is go on to Raisley and create a new giving day campaign. Doesn't have to be a real one. Just start playing with it and playing with the idea around it. Start with your team, meet with your team, think about through what will we do for a giving day? Go to our webinars, look at some other resources and some of the future resources we'll put up as well to think through what you strategically do for a giving day. But create a new template. Why not? You can, they're free. You just go create one and see what you come up with. We'd love to see those as well. So my encouragement is go and play with it. Next one is I'm going to be uh, uh, uploading this webinar up onto our YouTube channel. And there's going to be a bunch of resources attached to that as well. What I really would love to encourage you to do is comment on that. If you do see that and you comment on it, and there might be things that I've missed, some things that you want more clarity on, I'd love to make more content for you. So you can just go onto that, use the comment section, and let me know what you want to see more on Giving Days. We've got a new series out on Giving Days. The first one's available on YouTube. Go and check it out. You'll get a lot of stuff out of that. But it's going to be a five-part series covering some of the stuff we've looked at here already. Some of the things coming your way is we've got Facebook fundraising that's going to be launching very, very soon, which we're really, really excited about. And there's going to be some new content around that, which you're going to love. Direct debit is also on its way, which is going to be a really exciting part to help you look after your uh, regular givers as well. We're going to get a ton of that uh, stuff out of that. And we're also uh, working at the moment on multilingual, which is really going to help those in countries that are going to need that language support as well. Whole bunch of stuff happening with Raisley. Make sure you go onto YouTube. Check out the content, make sure you comment. It's great to have you on our webinars. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a buzz at support at raisley.com as we would love to answer any of the uh, questions that you have and get your next giving day set up. Hope that was helpful. Hope that was a bit of a rush through. Hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.